Before I knew about this house and what went on inside those dark walls, I refused to believe that such things existed. Certainly not now. In the 20th century. In America. But now I know they do exist. And will always exist. As long as there is evil in the world. And those who prefer evil to good. No matter what race or creed, we believe in God. We pray to him to help us in time of need. They must worship in their secret places and make their ghastly sacrifices under cover of night. Sea is far below. The rocks are sharp. No trace will ever be found. <laughs> But I knew nothing about all that when I first arrived. I was planning to have a happy, relaxed vacation in this beautiful spot with two people very close to me, my brother-in-law and my sister, Mandy. You can't get away from me. You can't get away from me. You can't get away from me. <laughs> You can't get rid of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can't get rid of me. Dick? Kate? She's been gone a long time. I think I'd better go find her. Oh, why don't you sit down, Kate? Your sister's a big girl now. I know, but lately... All right. I'll clean up the mess. When you find her, you tell her we'd better be getting back to town. Fog will be coming in soon. I was worried about you. I'm sorry. How do you feel? Don't worry. Pregnant women are supposed to walk. Why do you keep doing that? Hmm? What? You're so jumpy. Something's upsetting you. Surely you can tell me. All right. But you won't believe me. I think something's trying to, to get at me. What do you mean? It happened first out here about a month ago. All of a sudden, something, or somebody said something, almost as if it were inside my head. And then, after that, it, it happened to other places. That's why I wanted to walk by myself just now. This is where it started. And I thought if I faced up to it, it would go away. But it won't. Oh, Kate, I'm frightened. I'm so glad you're here. Have you spoken to the doctor about this? He just smiled. And told me I imagined it. What does Dick say? He won't believe me either.
Well, you gals certainly took your time. You don't know what this place is like when the fog starts rolling in. What you need is a good hot cup of coffee and a fire. Come on. Careful of the rocks. Come here, copper. Feel better now, Mandy? I feel fine. That's good. Oh, yeah, here it is. You're not going to play that again, are you, Dick? Oh, no, come on, kid. We're not going to go through all that nonsense again, are we? You used to like it. I'm sorry, Dick. Go ahead and play it. going to be all right. I'm sorry about the baby. Well, you, you did your best, doctor. Has she ever had an epileptic seizure before? Never. I can't understand it. It'll be a shock to her losing the baby. You'll have to make allowances if she's not herself for a few days. Poor kid. I'll look in on her again tomorrow. Thank you, doctor. Try to get some rest. He's wearing off, Mr. Anthony. Mandy. Well, honey, it's Kate. I've come back to you, Dickon. Felicia's come back. Mandy, darling. I don't want you. Go away. Mandy. It's Kate. Not Mandy. Felicia. Make her go away, Dickon. I never 
never mentioned it. Dickon, come back. And that nickname. She always called me that. Who? You heard her. She called herself Felicia. Dickon, come back. Go to it, Dick. The doctor warned us she might be irrational. Come back, Dickon. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. <laughs> she was <laughs> You ought to be in there. <laughs> there, now, now. You'll feel better in a little while. Husband, he'll sit beside you until you go to sleep. Dickon, I've come back to you. I've come back. What does she mean, Felicia? I don't understand. She couldn't have known. I, I never even mentioned Felicia's name. I don't know why we came back here. Almost as I've got no one of my own. Like that music today. That was Felicia's favorite music, especially that part I played. Since I've been back here, I felt compelled to play it, even though Mandy began to hate it. The same compulsion that made me come back to this house whether I wanted to or not. It's not that I don't love Mandy. Dick, who is Felicia? My first wife. She died here six years ago. Mandy did not even know of my first marriage. If that's true, was that wise? Well, it is true. Did this first marriage end in a divorce? She was drowned six years ago. Nobody knows how or even where. The body was never found. Quite a while later, a fisherman came up with a ring. I identified it. It's found in the belly of a shark. But there must be some explanation for Mrs. Anthony's knowing about your former wife. Are there any old photograph albums, letters, mementos? No, no, nothing. I got rid of everything. When we came here, my wife and I, we even avoided seeing my old friends. We didn't feel that we needed them. May I make a suggestion? Certainly, Doctor. No matter how hard it is, you must try to be as understanding as you can. When your wife feels better, I think you should discuss psychiatric treatment with her. But not now. Now you must give her the security of your devotion. Both of you. Don't oppose her in any way. We'll do our best, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, here's the Porter children. I'm ready for my ride. Oh, darling, it's so good to see you up and around at last. Take time to get used to this house. This? Maitre Renault would never approve. Who wouldn't approve? I suppose we should try to be friends. But we are, Mandy. It's unfortunate you came here at this time. As long as you're feeling well again, nothing else matters. Where's Dickon? Oh, he's bringing the car around. Uh, I took Copper for a walk. Copper? The dog, darling. You want me to bring him in for a moment? No. I don't want him in here. There's Dickon. 
Goodbye. She doesn't want to go. Well, she was all ready. Why does she have to be with us? Won't you be nice to her? For me? I'll get it. Terribly sorry I haven't been to see you, but I just got back from San Francisco last night. How are you? I've been ill. I know. I hope you aren't angry. I only heard about it this morning. I'm awfully sorry to hear about what happened. Oh, you mean the baby? But of course. Hi, Molly. Glad to see you back. Joe come with you? Oh, he'll have to stay up there another couple of weeks. Molly, I'd like you to meet Mandy's sister, Kate Hazelton. Kate, Molly Prentice. Hello. I've heard so much about you. Mandy and I knew Molly and Joe down in L.A. Well, I, I don't want to keep you. Molly, why don't you come back tomorrow for cocktails? All right. Please do. I'll try. Nice meeting you. Goodbye, Mandy. Goodbye. Why did you have to be so rude to her? Why, I suppose you didn't intend to be. Hop in, Kate. Go to the post office. Johnny, Johnny, you old son of a gun. How are you? How long has it been? Must be about six years. Gee, I thought you moved to New York. I'm back here to try and sell my house. Say, somebody told me you married again. Yeah, yeah, about a year ago. Are you uh, still unattached? Uh-huh. What are you doing right now? Just going in the post office. No, no, I, uh, there's somebody I want you to meet. My uh, sister-in-law is visiting us. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, no, come on, you'll like this. Mandy, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine. John Mitchell. Hello. John, this is my wife. Hello, John. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Anthony. And this is Kate Hazelton. John Mitchell, the world's best architect. Second best. Mr. Mitchell, I think I've seen your name in House and Garden. Thank you. Well, I think we'd better be running along. Why don't you drop by the house for a drink tomorrow? I'd like that very much. So would I. See you tomorrow, then. No army buddy of mine. I know. What do you mean you know? Oh, I, I probably mentioned him at some time. Where would you like to go? I'd like to go to my... I'd like to pay a call on the Bradleys. Bradleys? All right.
Mandy's never mentioned any Bradleys. For a very good reason. Mandy's never met them or ever heard of them. Dick, who is Mitra Renault? Where did you hear that name? Well, Mandy said that he wouldn't approve of something. Who is he? Somebody I never want to hear you mention again, let alone know. But Dick, he might That's have... all, Kate. That's all. Mrs. Bradley at home. Mrs. Bradley's in her study. Mr. Bradley's not feeling well. Who shall I say is calling? Mr. and Mrs. Dick Anthony and Mrs. Anthony's sister. I'll tell Mrs. Bradley you're here. other people's things. Still there, just as I left it. Good afternoon, Dickon. I heard you were in town with your new wife. Mother? What do you mean, calling me that? Aunt Felicia. Please, Mandy. You worked so hard to help me so long. Don't turn away from me now. Is this some kind of a cruel joke, Dickon? Unfortunately, no. And who are you? Dick's wife is my sister, Mrs. Bradley. She's had an attack of epilepsy. And ever since, she's had the delusion that she's Felicia, your daughter. They won't believe me, Mother. But you will. You must. Your voice is like hers. And your eyes. Think you could make me believe that you and she are the same? Father and I were in London when that was painted. I was 14. Why did you play that selection? Well, I always played that. I saw you looking in the cabinet. What was it you wanted? A little lion, dear. The one that Ralph gave me when we went to Green Lake. And who was Ralph? The little boy whose father took care of the boats. I suppose you remember the time we went to visit your cousins in Boston? The summer that you were 13? No, it wasn't Boston. It was Salem, and I was... You see, I was 11, not 13. Don't you remember, Mother? Please say that you remember. Please. Please. You... You shouldn't be here. That music. Who was playing it? I was. Do you remember those days in India? The Grove and Benares, and we walked together, and, and I said, Father, I'll never leave you. Yes, I remember. 
My daughter said that. But my daughter's dead. I am your daughter. Alicia. I've come back to you. Just as I said I would. No. No. Oh, but it's true. I tested it. At last. At last. Felicia. Ada. This isn't my doing. I know. Mandy. Will you please leave? Mandy, we're leaving now. I'm not Mandy. There's nothing you can do to bring her back. Why did you go? Kate, I, I want to talk to you. I won't leave her here. I must talk to you now. Take this woman away, Dickon. There's nothing to be gained by her staying here. Nothing to be gained? Kate. I can't leave her here. Come outside. We must get her away from this place. Look, we've got to face it. Felicia has taken possession of Mandy's body. You can't believe that. You heard, you saw. You actually believe that this creature of spirit, or whatever you call it, has driven my sister out of her own body? Mrs. Bradley's help. Oh, what could she do? I don't know. But she's a strange, evil woman. Felicia was, too. I couldn't face up to it then. I was a fool. Then we must fight them. Do you realize what you're fighting? Oh, let me think. Let me think. Let them go. No, not Dickon. He can't leave with her. I can't give up. That's what they want. You think I wouldn't do something if something could be done? We'll all be together again. Just as soon as we get rid of the sister. At the moment, we're at their mercy. Not forever. Not if we are strong enough. We can try. He's not leaving without me. I knew he wouldn't. Are you ready to go home, Felicia? I beg of you, Ada. Stop while there's still time. She'll come back. She has to, in order to remain. When she does, we'll leave you. God will punish you for this, Ada. You believe in your God. I'll believe in mine. Seconds. You don't have to be the perfect host. I know, I know. If I keep this up, I'll be the perfectly plastered host. <sighs> Sit down, Dick. I know, I know. <sighs> well, I wonder what's keeping Mandy. Here I am, darling. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. How are you tonight, John? I'm fine, Mrs. Anthony. That's quite an outfit. I'm glad you like it. It was with the things I had sent over this morning. I wore it specially for you. I wonder who the devil that can be. Oh, hi, 
Molly. Hi. Come on in. <laughs> Why, Mandy. How wonderful your hair is like that. Was it your idea, Kate? No, no, it wasn't. Oh, Mrs. Prentice, I'd like you to meet my very dear friend, John Mitchell. How do you do? The architect? That's right. My husband and I are two of your greatest fans. Someday, we hope we can afford you. Thank you. <laughs> I know how you dote on this color, Mandy. Thank you. I also brought a little something for, for Copper. Where is he? Oh, he's, uh, he's out in the yard. Well, I thought he never left Mandy's side. Mind if I give it to him? No, no, of course not. Be right back. Copper! Copper! Here, get on, boy. Get on. Oh. Go away. Go away! Get him out of here! Come on, boy. Terribly sorry. What made him do that? Molly, it's not your fault. I should have warned you not to bring him in. But he loves Mandy. Come on outside. I want to talk to him. How to explain, Mr. Mitchell. My sister's never been like this before. Some people are deathly afraid of animals. But she's never been afraid of anything. Before we go any further, how about calling me John? All right. I hope this won't keep you away. Dick's very fond of you. Did you know him when he was married before? Yes, I knew him then. Would you say my sister is anything like Felicia? No. Not in appearance. It's so hard for me to understand how a man who loves my sister could have loved a woman like Felicia. I mean, the way she must have been. Well, I could never blame Dick for that. Felicia was a woman of great charm when she wished to use it. Unfortunately, she'd stop at nothing to get what she wanted. But like most charming people, it was hard to remember her faults when you were with her. I didn't come here to talk about Felicia. I came here strictly because of you. How about going for a drive with me tomorrow? Oh, I'd like to. Oh, but I can't. Come on, Kate. You're too healthy a woman to stay cooped up playing nursemaid. Well, I'll have to discuss it with Dick. Why? You're over 21. Come on, Kate. Is it a date? All right, it's a date. Fine. Now, forget about your troubles. Get a good night's sleep. Well, that's easier said than done. Have you got anything to make you sleep? I've got some pills. I seldom use them, though. Well, use them tonight. Sleep's the best medicine for nerves. All right. I'll give them a try. Good girl.
What a coward you are, Dickon. That's why you keep the sister here. You're afraid to be alone with me. You know it's true. Send her away. It's out of the question. I'm going downstairs. Try to get some sleep.
a lucky thing you woke up. But I turned off that heater. And I opened the window. I know I did. Nobody could ever prove she did it. Dick. I had a dream. I was in a lonely place. Nandy was calling me. A long way off. I remember I tried to answer her. She did call me. She knew my danger. Dick. Mandy isn't lost to us after all. Felicia can't stay here, Kate. Oh, we can't antagonize her. She might do something to herself. And she'd be doing it to Mandy. But I won't let you risk your life. I'll be on my guard from now on. No, we've got to stick to our plan. All right. But I'll never let her stay in this house alone. Ever again. to a man who has no roots. More? Well, what time is it? Can't you forget about your sister for a few hours? I shouldn't have come away. She's Dick's wife. Let him do some of the worrying, huh? It's not as simple as that. Last night, she... I can't tell you. Makes me sick to think about it. But it... It's not Mandy's doing. Hi! Nancy? I heard you were back. You didn't mind my coming over to say hello. I'm glad you did. We were just leaving, but sit down. Miss Hazelton, Mrs. Cordell. Hello. Hello. Uh, coffee? Uh, no, thanks. John used to be my closest neighbor. Neighbor? A good deal of that was my estate. Well, isn't it still? I sold everything, except the guest house, not long after you left. Well, that has happened. Someone told me Dick Anthony is in town. Is it possible? It's quite possible. I'm visiting him. I'm his sister-in-law. Really? I used to know him quite well. I hate to break this up, but we'd better be going. Must be the real estate agent. Be right back. How is Dickon? Well, he's fine. But uh, my sister and I don't call him Dickon. No, no, I imagine not. Frankly, I'm surprised he came back here. Because of his first wife's death, you mean? You know about that? Were you a friend of hers? No woman was a friend of Felicia's. Dick met her at my house. Well, then perhaps you know the Bradleys. I used to. She attended some meetings of a group I belonged to. Mm -hmm. What kind of a group? Mm. We're interested in many different things. Some people might call them occult, but it goes deeper than that, much deeper. Our leader's a very remarkable man, Maitre Renal. From the way you said that, I'm curious to meet him. Do you think you could introduce us? He's not interested in those who are merely curious. But I think he might be able to help me. In what way? Well, you see, I'm a widow. My husband left me well off, but still there's a great emptiness in my life. To be accepted by him, one must have imagination and daring. But Maitre will judge you for himself. I'll take you there tomorrow. You're very kind. Oh, no, not at all. I must run. I know John is anxious to leave. Call me in the morning. I'm in the book. Better not tell John. Where 
Miss Nancy? She had to leave. Don't get involved with her. Oh? Why not? She used to be a nice woman. Since her husband died, she gone kind of berserk. In what way? She's mixed up with a charlatan named Renault. Claims to have founded a new religion. So keep away from Nancy. She can only do you harm. Magic. I open it. any longer, Matron. At the moment, you still doubt. It takes months for some people to throw off the shackles of beliefs taught them from childhood. Once you have accomplished this, then you will soar, become one of the earth, the moon. Are you of a deeply religious nature? I believe in God. Of course one believes in God, otherwise one couldn't believe in the devil. Oh, I'm sure he exists. You must not smile. The devil is a proud spirit and doesn't like to be mocked. I intended no mockery. Why did you want to see me? Mrs. Coradell must have told you. You think me a fool? I know a great deal about you. You are not a lonely widow. You came to visit your sister because she's ill. Why are you so curious about the former Felicia Bradley? Because Mrs. Bradley has brought Felicia back in the body of my sister, Mandy. She did work without me. I need your help to fight Mrs. Bradley and bring my sister back. If I agree to help you, you must place yourself in my hands. Think only through my thoughts. Believe only what I believe. Do you understand what that means? Yes. Once you have accepted the possibility of everything, and that everything is possible, the barriers are gone, then we'll bring your sister back, you and I together. I understand. But once you have crossed the barrier, there is no turning back. When you have decided, come back to me with your answer. I will be back.
Hello? Yes? This is Miss Hazelton. Well, who is it, please? Mr. Bradley. All right. Yes, I'll be right there. Miss Hazelton, sir. I won't need you anymore, Agnes. Yes, sir. Excuse me for not getting up, Miss Hazelton. Well, sit near me, if you don't mind. My voice tires easily. I wouldn't have asked you to come if there'd been any immediate danger. I'm on your side. I felt that you were. You're a good person. I feel it. I was good myself once. That's why I want to help you. If I'd only been stronger, I fathered a beautiful, talented girl and watched her become a monster. It can't have been your fault. When she was younger, I tried to control her, but she had an indomitable will. It was Felicia who first became interested in the black arts. She drew her mother with her. When I first began to suspect, I, I refused to believe it. But eventually I knew. By then it was too late. My wife was a fine woman when I married her. But if you look upon the face of evil long enough, it no longer appears ugly. You're in great danger from them. You don't know what they're capable of. I'm trying to find out. Today, I went to see a man who calls himself Maitre Renault. French for master. Don't go near him again. I will do anything to bring my sister back. You mustn't do anything his way or you'll be lost. That man is strong, as evil often is. No, you must fight him with courage and faith, more than you've ever called on before. The only thing they fear is a strength greater than their own. I'll do my best. Good. Then I'll help you bring your sister back. You? Against your own daughter? I love my daughter in spite of the evil in her. But she's been dead for six years. I don't want her back. Not this way. And my wife... She's come back. Go quickly. Remember, I will help you. Thank you. My husband asked you to come here? I came here. Not that it matters. He can be of no use to you. Why don't you stop meddling in things you know nothing about? I'm learning more all the time. If you want to go on living a useful, happy life, I'm warning you to go away and do not come back. I'm not afraid of you. You may soon have reason to be. If any harm comes to me, Dick will hold you responsible. There are secret ways of causing pain. Pain that ends in death. How could anyone prove that I was responsible? I will not go away. And you will not win.
How long have you been here like this? Not long. I, I was ill. I I'm all right now. I knew... I knew I mustn't give in to them. That if, if I let them win out, that... Let who win? Oh. I better call the doctor. Oh, no. No, it's no use. They wouldn't find anything wrong. Oh. I tell you, I'm all right now. You don't look all right. Where's Dick and your sister? Oh, he... He took her out for the day. She can't be left alone. Kate, I know I have no right to interfere with your life, but I must speak out. No. no I know what you think. You believe what the doctor suggested, that Felicia's still alive, that all these people are her accomplices, trying to frighten Mandy and me away. No. I don't believe that Felicia is alive. I know that Felicia is dead because I saw her die. I was responsible. You killed her? I met her after she was married to Dick. From the first, she set out to fascinate all men, including me. I'll admit I was attracted. But I could see what she'd done to others. Dick. The night it happened, we were all at a big party at the Cordell's. She and Dick had a fight over some man that she'd made up to, and Dick left. And then she started to make a play for me. But I've been leery of her for a long time. All of a sudden, she'd gone. Nobody saw her leave. Frankly, I was glad she'd gone. Eventually, the party broke up. It was quite late by the time I hit the coast road. Suddenly, I heard her laugh. <laughs> no other person ever laughed like Felicia. I stopped the car. She was in the back, hidden under a blanket. I ordered her to get into the front seat and stop acting like an idiot. I said every brutal thing I could think of. She got hysterical. Threatened to kill herself. I was so sorry I told her to go ahead. This was a great spot for it. Then I came to my senses. I could see she was getting too close to the cliff without knowing it. I tried to talk her into coming back, but she backed away. She lost her footing. Fell back. Never forget her scream as long as I live. Somehow I got home. I was in a state of shock. All I could think was if I called the police, they'd think I did it. Nobody knew she was in my car. It was better to leave it alone. It's something I have to live with. The only reason I've told you is this. Regardless of what you've gone through, or what people have tried to make you believe, the dead do not come back.
Kate, uh, what's with the car? Do you always park that way? It's a good thing I came by. Kate was... I was ill. I'm fine now. What happened? It doesn't matter. It's over now. I'll call you in the morning. Uh, I'm going to go out and straighten out the landscape. Felicia, I'm not afraid of you. I'm stronger than you are now. Hello. Y yes, Agnes. We'll be right over. Where is he? Mr. Bradley Mann. She doesn't make any sense, but I think we'd better go over there right away. Calm her down. Uh, you don't have to be frightened now, Agnes. Tell us what happened. I heard them upstairs. It sounded like he was praying. And she was screaming at him. And then he stopped. And when I came up, his door was open. And there he was, lying on his bed. It gave me an awful turn because she was still talking to him. I knew he was dead the minute I saw him. Oh, Mother of God! in here? Well, Dick didn't want you to leave the room. He, he wants you to rest. Where is Dick? He's making arrangements about Mr. and Mrs. Bradley. Who are they? Mandy? Is it you? Well, who else could it be? Please open the door. Just a minute. Are 
I knew you would come to me, Felicia. those eyes, that mouth. What right have you to question me? What right? I've given you all my money, brought others to you. But you did, you did on your own free will. That's why you were so interested in the Hazelton woman. Felicia won't help you. Don't take her back. I do what I please. You'll regret it if you take her back. What can you possibly do to me? Get out. With him? Yes. Yes, I'll never leave you again. I swear it. I'm sure you won't, now that you have no one else. But we must hurry. Have no fear. Once we have done what we must do, we'll go away, Harvey. Is there some friend of this Mandy? Someone who would suspect nothing? There's a woman named Molly Prentice. My husband is away. It's dangerous, but we must risk it. Can you play this, uh, Mandy? Even the sister thought I was Mandy. Good. Now you must call this Molly Prentice. Hurry. somewhere. Kate! Well, she wouldn't have gone out. I must see Miss Hazelton. What do you want? They've gone. They've got that girl with them. Who? What girl? Felicia and Renal. They've got Molly Prentice. Felicia? Well, they couldn't. I've, I've got my wife locked in upstairs. The key is gone. She's with her now. They, they have some girl with them. I'll take you there. You? He told me to get out. Don't believe her, Kate. I saw it all. I know why they took that girl. It's terrible what they mean to do. They must drain every ounce of her blood. I... I followed them. Where? To Renal's house where there's no one to see and hear. But he forgets I know how to get in. He's taking a risk, but he'll do anything for Felicia. Will you take us there? Yes. We must hurry. You can't go like this. I'm going.
Awful dream. I was all alone in a cold, dark place. I fell asleep on the couch. Why am I here? Mandy, honey. I lost the baby, didn't I? I guess I've been under sedation. That's why everything seems so fuzzy and far away. It's all right, honey. Just as long as we're together. She must never know the truth about what happened to her. Will anyone ever know? <laughs> <laughs> 